Good uh, morning, everyone. Uh, thank you for uh, joining this uh, webinar uh, talking about mastering advanced contract and document management in enterprise centric environments. Uh, I want to welcome uh, Tim Stewart, founder and CEO uh, at Dogfield, who will present with us together on this uh, joint webinar. Uh, I'm uh, Hans Hansen. I'm the business development and marketing director at Agile Point EMEA. Thank you, Hans. I'm uh, Tim Stewart. I'm the co-founder of Dogfield and I'm uh, happy to be here. Thanks for uh, inviting me. You're welcome, Tim. Uh, some uh, short housekeeping rules uh, or items we want to mention. This event is being recorded. Uh, we are asking audience to switch off uh, microphones if possible. Uh, if you have any questions, feel free to use them in the chat options, which is going through LinkedIn as well. And we will handle uh, any questions at the end of this webinar. So uh, for the agenda for today is we will have a short introduction about why we are holding this webinar, which business problems we are trying to solve in this combined solution by Dogfield and Agile Point. And of course, we are going to run a kind of a demo environment. And at the end, we have this Q&A session time. Okay. So if we are looking into the business challenges today uh, and based on a, on, a, on a seminar or webinar conducted by PwC uh, across 4,700 CEOs, 41% uh, of people were complaining about the uh, issues they were having inside the company related to internal procurement and contracting processes. On the one side, it's good. It means that almost 60% of them have a, a kind of a solution in-house. But if we are looking into this, 41% uh, still suffering uh, on the efficiency of procurement and contracting processes. This still means that there's a lot of room to improve these things. So why are people still struggling with this uh, procurement and contract and document management related processes? Um, after digging and talking to uh, our customers from both uh, Dogfield and Agile Point, we noticed that there are mainly four issues uh, in this field. A lot of people are dealing with complex policies and procedures, and not only the complexity, but also the lack, the fact that um, majority of people don't understand these processes and policies. It means the definition of these policies and procedures are maybe written out on paper, but they are not known to all people. So it means they are not fully automated. They are in air type of processes. The second topic, what they mentioned is lack of automation. Okay. Today, what we see is that the issue is mainly driven by the tools like Office today. Okay, So on one side, we have tools like legacy applications, maybe SIP, Salesforce, we have Excel, Word, and email. But at the same time, all these tools are creating more problems because they are all siloed type of applications. On the other side, of course, we have communication gaps, uh, not only internal communication, but also communication between you and your client and your vendor or third parties. So communication is happening in all direction is not always that running that smoothly. And as a last item, we have a lot of silent data. Okay, everybody knows companies invested a lot of money in ERP solutions, dynamic solutions, CRM solutions. But at the end, it happens that the majority of people are extracting data into Excel sheets. They are extracting data in, into other databases. And at the end, they have a lot of subsets of, of data. Okay, And that's becoming a problem, especially if you want to improve your contracting processes, your document-related uh, procurement processes. But at the end, nobody knows what is now the real data set, in fact. So what we are going to show you today is how you can solve all these problems. How can a single or two platforms solve all these problems and make policies more automated, more visual to uh, users itself? Okay. So Dogfield and Agile Point, uh, what we did is we worked together in order to work on all these issues. And just to highlight a few of them and what you will see in, in the next slides and also in the demo. On one side, what we try to achieve is we try to streamline the workflow automation. Okay, So when we are talking about contracts or documents or procurement-related process, 
the whole process from the beginning to the end, going across departments, that's what we are calling cross-functional uh, automation, but also end-to-end -end automation. So we will have a single solution which allows you to manage a full procurement process, by example, which is starting by the sales team, going into legal procurement, going across the other teams inside your, your company, teams which are part of the onboarding, maybe production, etc. So we are able to manage the whole workflow across your company. Okay. At the other side, everybody knows what's going on when you're talking to procurement or when you're trying to sign a sales related contract. You have this ongoing on ping pong of your work document, which you're sending over to your client. They are reviewing it. They send it to a legal team. It's sent back. And at the end, you're getting lost. You don't know which version is the actual version. Uh, people have different versions. Uh, sometimes you have to wait for people. Uh, some people may change as well. At the other side, another people person sorry, made also a change on a different copy of that document. So what we are trying to do is, well, reducing the whole cycle itself, okay? Uh, what we noticed by several of, of the customers using these solutions, that procurement cycles or contract cycles, which are typically taking weeks, are now getting reduced to hours and days, okay? At the same time, we are focusing on enhancing the collaboration which are involved in a contract and document management, okay? In a typical life scenario, it's not only the salespeople, but we have also the legal teams. Maybe you have some an, an external auditor which has to be involved. Okay, so they will all have real time access, and they can all real time collaborate on this item. A more important item is the compliance and security aspects. You could say, well, I can specify security around a word document. That's maybe one good option. But more important, you have to also control and master the content of a contract, okay? So once you define a contract template, you want to control which parts of that contract are open for negotiation, which parts are not open, and which ones are have to be blocked and are out of discussion, okay? So contract and document management is much more than only the document itself. It's also the content of that content document and that's what we will show you as well in the demo and what tim from dogfield will explain as well okay and of course it's a, this is all leading to enhanced user experience increased flexibility and of course you want to focus on the outcome and less on the procedures because now we are going to automate the procedures in fact so this is roughly what the combined solution of Dogfield and Agile Point is going to show you in the next uh, few minutes. Uh, I'm going to switch to uh, Tim. Tim, you can go ahead on uh, who is Dogfield and what is Dogfield doing? Yeah, thank you, Hans. Thank you for, uh, again, thank you for inviting me and uh, happy to speak here to, uh, to all of you uh, people joining the webinar today. Um, from, uh, I'm here from uh, Amsterdam, uh, well, Hans is here from, uh, from Belgium, so we have a good combination of uh, uh, nationalities here already. Um, we, uh, Dogfield started uh, uh, back in 20, 2019 uh, with a mission to, uh, to optimize document workflows. Um, we noticed that a lot of uh, enterprise customers, they were dealing uh, exactly with the problems that Hans already explained, dealing with long lead times and, and documents. And we thought, okay, we really have to do something different in order to improve it because uh, the word-based uh, architecture of how enterprises are dealing with templates and everything, it's very breakable, it's very uh, inefficient and uh, a lot of uh, problems come for that. So that's why we, uh, with Dofflu, we went to a totally new platform, a totally new uh, concept, and uh, which we'll explain a little bit more about. Um, can you go to the next slide, please, Hans? Um, so Dogfield is an end-to-end -end contract management uh, and document management solution, uh, which allows our users to create documents, uh, collaborate in them, approve them, sign them even, and also archive and renew them all from a single platform. Um, and this is incredibly powerful because it means that you don't have to use all these other tools that you have to be using uh, and switching to all the time, while at the same time keeping uh, in contact with your templates, the templates that you're working with and keeping them always up to date. Um, so compliance is a very big, big factor for us. Um, uh, also, because you're working from one environment, uh, it allows you to 
um, to streamline your whole workflow so you don't have to switch between different applications um, to uh, to go to different uh, different phases of your your your, your contract. Um, so no re-uploading in DocuSign or uh, other signing tools, but actually managing everything from a single tool. So even when a document is moved to step back, for example, that can help a lot. Um, next slide, please. Um, so one of our core principles is that we want to be very intuitive. Uh, we started uh, we started um, working with uh, uh, education customers, and for them it was always very hard to uh, to understand the software that they're used to. Um, and well, it's quite uh, quite hard also for them to to start uh, start working with software. But we made it very easy for them uh, uh, thanks to our intuitive uh, software. Um, so one of the things that you can do with Docfield is that you control what is negotiable and what is non-negotiable. Um, so um, you can, in the content, actually say what parts you can edit or what parts your team can edit and what parts of the document are not editable by, by your team. Um, so it will also allow you to automate the logic and automate the smart fields, uh, which is uh, another part of our system. So you can say, okay, this content or this module is only available if you're an enterprise customer and also fully automate that. Um, and our customer, for example, Segeka, uh, is leveraging this power to massively scale the contracts that they're, uh, that they're doing with their organization. Um, next slide, please. Uh, Tim, you have control. You can move over, over to right. your slide if you want. All right. Um, one second. Voila. So um, it also allows you to collaborate with multiple parties. Um, so um, we can uh, we can uh, um, we can edit uh, a document. We can we have an audit trail, and we have workflow management and deadlines in the application. So this allows you to massively speed up the negotiation, and uh, also for Hans, it, it, it means that uh, that uh, you're using our application, right? Uh, for uh, yeah, for, correct. Uh, how does it help you to uh, to make documents uh, faster? Yeah, we are using this solution for about three years now. And the main benefit for us is that it, it's smoothing the whole process between us and our partners and, and clients. Okay. So in, in before we had this dog field solution, it took us re really weeks to talk to and, and finalize an agreement. So now we have much better control over the content of, of an agreement because some parts are out of discussion, of course. Some items are open for changes on what a client wants. And now we noticed even with large enterprises like banks and financial institutes, we can reduce the cycle, which is typically taking two to three months. And now we can reduce it to a couple of days. And, and sometimes within one week, we are able to solve the whole solution, even if third party lawyers are involved in the whole process. So it's really reducing the whole time, but it's giving us also a better control over the content. Thanks, Hans. Um, yeah, so it's uh, uh, next of all, we're also working with a lot of uh, customers that they're dealing with complex contracts, and we see that the power that they have right now in terms of optimizing their their content and uh, their workflows is uh, is a massive uh, massive game changer. Um, so another key aspect of Docfield is that we can guarantee uh, the correctness and compliance of the documents, and we do this by keeping connected with the template. Um, so all the documents, while they're in progress, while they're still internal in your organization, they can still be uh, the template can still be updated to reflect, for example, new uh, new updates. So um, if you're a small uh, organization, uh, this is usually not like a, not a big deal. But uh, suppose that you are a bigger bank or a bigger firm, um, a lot of documents can get updated and uh, or templates can get updated. So there's a policy change, uh, for example. And you want to make sure that every document that goes out of the door the next day, or actually the same day, is always up to date with, uh, with the latest template version. Docfield allows you to change the template, which will immediately update all the documents that are in progress already. Um, so they have uh, uh, so all the fixed parts, all the titles, all the, all the contents of the document will be uh, updated to the latest version. And this allows you to, to have a sense of uh, governance and control over everything that goes out of the door 
without needing to manually update or manually uh, uh, overwrite uh, what teams are doing in their documents. Um, so there's also a wide variety of use cases uh, that, that, that this applies to. Um, so, for example, in the commercial sector, we have, of course, the proposals and sales agreements, but also in HR, we have employment agreements and bonus, uh, for example, bonus reg regulations, or generally we have uh, things like NDAs or uh, any progress reports that, that are recurring, that are monthly, um, and uh, see a lot of volume. Um, so the highest value add uh, Docfield can bring, well, well, we are applicable to a lot of use cases, but the highest value add is in use cases where there's a a certain amount of standardization, so uh, at least uh, 30 to 50 percent of the contract or document has to be standardized. Um, there's medium to high volume, and there's multiple stakeholders involved. So also the need for more collaboration into the into the document, because uh, we see that uh, while you can automate also a lot of parts, not every part of a document is automatable. There's always a negotiation taking place where you do have to do a manual step, and this is where we uh, where we uh, where we come in. Um, so what is the value that we can bring overall? Um, well, first of all, you have a single platform for your document workflow, so no need for separate tooling, uh, e-signing, et cetera. Um, second, we bring automation by connecting with platforms like Agile Point, and we bring an advanced uh, template configuration, so you can really reduce the manual tasks and, and errors also that are uh, made by individual people, especially at volume. Um, thirdly, we bring enhanced collaboration and traceability, so everything is always locked, so all the comments are locked and all the, the, the content is, uh, changes are locked. And uh, fourthly, we, we manage the compliance of the team of the document, so it's always up to date with the latest template version. Um, back to you, Hans. Uh, thanks for the uh, overview, Tim. I think this, uh, what Docfield can achieve is really compelling and can help a, a lot of companies on this level. So what is Agile Point bringing in on top of, of the doc field is, of course, um, we want to bring in the whole process part. We want to uh, make the whole integration into the doc field as part of an enterprise-centric approach, OK? So Agile Point itself, <coughs> excuse me, is a hyper-automation platform, which is really focusing on cross-functional end-to-end process automation, OK? Today, you have invested a lot of in, in money in ERP, CRM solutions, maybe already started in the direction of going into AI machine learning or RPA. What Agile Point can do, it can bring it to the next level. Okay, So we have never the intention to replace existing systems. Now what we want to do is we really want to enhance your existing systems. Okay, So we want to focus on enabling the business transformation. We want to make sure that uh, any investment what you are trying to achieve is a future-proof type of investment, looking and supporting the adapt adaptability for dynamic changing environments. Everybody knows today we are living in a world where nothing is fixed, okay? Today, your customer is asking for this, but there is no guarantee tomorrow that it will be the same procedure, that it will be the same way of working. So you have to, you need to have the ability to change very fast and not on a solution which is going to take months or weeks in order to change, okay? So we are really focusing on accelerated deployments, going in fast and in short cycles, both from a technical and a business uh, perspective. On the other side, we are also focusing on reducing overhead, minimizing manual tasks, making sure that processes are becoming less redundant, and that is going to enable all your silos of data and systems what you have today. So it's really focusing on driving the operational excellence. But at the same time, it's really focusing on, on staying ahead in this dynamic market. Uh, the dynamic capabilities is really uh, mind-blowing. We give you the options to change things in real time. Even when you have a procurement process running for, let's say, two or three weeks, and suddenly you expected or noticed that a certain change has to be done, which was executed last week, we give you the ability to roll back to that situation, okay? So it allows you to quickly adapt to your customer needs and, and feedback on, on that level. And what's in, important, you're still having control over compliance. 
because compliance is still key in your organization, especially if you are talking about contracts and documents. Okay, solutions like Agile Point are industry compliant with uh, regulations like CFR 21. Uh, there is no need to uh, perform extra legwork in order to achieve this. Uh, all mechanisms to make sure that data is protected is available, and it's really an enterprise governance type of solution. From a technical deployment perspective, the solution is cloud agnostic. If you're now running on AWS, Azure, or you're running on a hybrid model, which means partially in the cloud, partially on-prem, we are still able to cover your solution. So in this way, we are sure to safeguard your future investment. The main benefit is giving you the ability to stay ahead of your competitors. You have the latest technology integration, bridging the silos of data. Uh, you will see in the scenario in a couple of minutes that we are starting with a demo scenario, which is starting with, with based on a Salesforce integration. But if you have maybe Dynamics or, or Sugar CRM, in fact, it doesn't matter. We are trying to leverage all your existing investments and solutions what you have already uh, in-house. So let's uh, look into the, the most exciting part of today, the demo of the scenario. So we have um, a couple of, uh, let's say, one scenario. We are going to start on one side by uh, a Salesforce uh, opportunity, which is created. That's going to kick off an Agile Point related process. And the Agile Point environment is going to control the doc field uh, contracts and management. So let's switch to uh, our uh, demo environment. Okay. So uh, for people familiar with, with Salesforce, I'm currently inside uh, a Salesforce environment. I hope you can see my screen because I switched not, to not the different settings. Not yet. If you give me uh, one second, I'm going to make sure that the right window is shared with everyone. Voila. Okay, great. Okay, I'm uh, now connected to our uh, Salesforce environment. Uh, we are going to run the demo together with, with Tim, uh, who is going to uh, talk more briefly about some uh, doc field related functionality. So I'm inside uh, the Salesforce uh, environment. I'm uh, acting as a sales uh, accountant manager now, and I have a new opportunity. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to quickly create a new opportunity. Um, say, let's say we have the ability to sell a lot of uh, 3D printers. I'm expecting the closing date by tomorrow. And I'm going to say, OK, this is a one uh, opportunity safe. OK, so what's happening now is we just created a kind of an opportunity in a certain situation inside the Salesforce environment. And what happened now behind the screens the Agile Point environment is watching that uh, Salesforce environment and is triggering of uh, process flow. So what we noticed, if we look, is so here we see that we have a basic uh, process model. We see different swim lanes, like uh, I'm the account manager. I have also my boss who has to approve that opportunity. And then we see that there is a kind of involvement to the, to the customers. And we see also the doc field part, which is going to re regulate NDAs, contracts, et cetera. Okay. So if everything's fine, I just received an, an email right now saying, okay, Hans, uh, nice, but uh, okay, I'm acting as Richard for this demo purpose. You uh, asked to create a, con a kind of a contract. Uh, can you please uh, review that process and make sure that all the data is available? Okay. So we see indeed that there is an opportunity created, which is this saying uh, a lot of 3D printers. It's closed. We are expecting to close the deal tomorrow. The system has grabbed from different resources all the information about um, the, the company. And I'm just going to complete uh, the company name just to make sure. Um, of course, this data can be filled in manually. Uh, it can also be uh, retracted from different sources, like what we did here in this situation. We are grabbing the data from um, Salesforce environment. 
I can see more information about who is the, uh, the directors of that company, who are the beneficial owners. So I can complete a completely uh, key UI about this uh, customer. I can see some financial information, etc. If needed, I can upload the documents now. So I reviewed as a sales manager, I reviewed that information and say, okay, fine, this is looking fine for me. I'm going to submit it. And what the system is going to do now, it's going to, um, okay, so here at this moment we have the task. And then in the next step, if you see, it has now submitted a task to my manager to say, okay, Hans or Richard has created a kind of a new opportunity. He reviewed all the data. Can you please approve this uh, business opportunity so we can agree and move on with the, the contract cycle, okay? So I'm going to play uh, the manager of myself in this situation. So I can review the data, make sure that all the information is correctly available. Um, I can upload the documents. And as you see, I have a new field, which in this situation is status. It allows me to ask more information. So I could go back to Richard and say, well, uh, still have some doubts about this. Can you please clarify that information? Or on the other right, I could say, okay, this is fine. And when I click on approve, the system is proposing me directly who is going to sign this um, NDA and the contracts. So for the demo purpose, uh, Tim is going to uh, do the approvement. I'm going to say it looks okay for me. Uh, great deal. Okay, I'm going to add this comment. All this information is captured into the system. So if you want to do reporting or BI afterwards, I will have all the detailed information available. Okay. So uh, at this stage, we have uh, submitted it. If so if we are looking into the steps, we notice that uh, the information on who is going to sign is already auto-captured and the system is now automatically creating an NDA, okay? So if we are connecting now to the uh, demo environment inside DocField, we notice that there is a new contract created. So in this case, there is a non-disclosure agreement created you see it already automatically received information about the person who is going to sign. So in this demo, Tim is going to sign it. Um, and you see here as well that uh, when we are building the contract, I have a few options. So in our demo company, we have two legal entities. We have in this situation, we have Agile Point EMEA based in Belgium, but we have also, also Agile Point Inc based in US. So as a user, I still have the option to specify in this situation, okay, who is going to be uh, the legal part? So we are saying, okay, safe, we are going to be uh, going for the Agile Point EMEA item. We are also tracking who made these changes. Uh, so we have full proof, okay? And you notice that uh, already fields coming originally out of Salesforce added with additional data by the user has been filled in in this uh, contract document in this situation, the non-disclosure agreement. Uh, the user has no option to uh, change the data. Everything is, is blocked. And what I can do now, I can move this contract or this non-disclosure agreement into a, a signing step. So I'm going to say, okay, please, uh, in this situation, Tim, can you sign that agreement? I'm also going to enable the option to send automatically reminders in case that the contract or the document is not signed within the uh, asked time. Okay, send invite, okay? So now what's happening bet between the screens or behind the screens, the NDA is created, it has been created and converted. Tim has now received in his email box an invite in order to sign this agreement. And the system is now waiting until that NDA is signed. So we are going to wait for a couple of seconds behind now. And in a couple of seconds, we will see that the NDA is getting signed by Tim and the system will proceed to the next steps into the, the flow. Yeah, I just sent this document. Ah, it's coming in already. The process, what you see here, is just an example. So in your business situation, if you say, well, we want to have this additional steps, what you see is what you get type of approach. So very visually, we can change that model of the process. There is no way, there is no need for having developers or programmers available in order to build this process. 
So as you see behind the screens now, Tim has approved this uh, non-disclosure agreement. The system has received it. If everything is fine, I will receive also an email to say, okay, the NDA is signed off and I have a copy of that NDA. So as a next step, what we are doing, we are creating the contract, okay? So the contract has now been created and we are going to switch now to Tim, who is going to deep dive in the capabilities of dog fields when creating a, a contract, by example. Tim, up to you. Thank you, Hans. I will share my screen again. Um, let's see here, voila. So um, we see that just one minute ago, I uh, received the contract here, the Bamboo Labs contract, and uh, I, can, I see it also in my dashboard. Um, so right now I'm back into Dogfield um, and I see now that uh, the signs have already been assigned there and I see now the whole end user software as a subscription agreement. Um, here we can also see uh, that we can uh, still select a few options. So even though everything has been pre-filled in, so both on the, on the top side uh, and on the, all, the, all the way on the bottom side, uh, all these things have been addressed, we can still uh, edit a few options because again, uh, there's like a lot of documents also like this where you still need some flexibility. So right now, when I change the, uh, the, the party again, we see that also the contents here that they're automatically updated. So this is a form of conditional logic that we can, uh, that we can do. Um, so right now, I will also uh, see uh, go to the end and I can also add some additional options here. So for example, I'm negotiating. Uh, there's a negotiation taking place with the client and yeah, we want to see some extra options. So let's say that we want the option A and option B and option C. And we can even add, uh, add like a table here uh, with some more uh, uh, things that we discussed um, for which we also have like a, 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 a history available. And I can also comment between me and Hans. So if I say uh, I have a question about something, uh, I can actually type it here. Um, so this is a collaboration process that's going on into the document. Um, now it can also be that we actually want to make an exception somewhere. Eh? And uh, in this case, I can, I can do the override myself, but normally the customer is not able to do it. Uh, it's only something fun. So say that we say, okay, for 19.3, we actually want to have a, uh, um, we want to have a, a different term. So uh, in this case, I will just act as Hans right now, but I can actually override this block uh, which is normally a standard block, and I can actually update it. Um, so uh, let's just say, for example, we want, we want lower here. Uh, we can make the change. And right now, we also see that the, the change that we made, we can also audit it and uh, look back at, at the change history of this thing. And also, this is also all being locked as a, as a change in the recent activity. So we always have a, a track record of what happened into the document. Um, what also can happen during this part of the process, especially if you have process that take like a little bit longer or a little bit more time, is that the template is being changed. Now, uh, I will quickly show what happens here. So suppose we were editing 19.3, uh, we will make actually a change here to 19.2 and we uh, make an addition here. So this is a form, example of a policy change and we want to make sure that this is also being executed in, in the current documents. It doesn't have to be, but in some case you want it to be, you want to, Make, make sure that it is updated. So right now, we, uh, this is automatically saved when we change it. And if we refresh uh, uh, and we go back to this, uh, so, so because we changed 0.19, it's now not being updated. But if you reset the content then to the additional, uh, the original one, we see that the addition now is part of the text. So it is uh, up to date to the latest version. Um, so right now, I want to go forward to signing the document and uh, which is now in the first in the checking phase, so it now goes back to Hans, but let's say we just co continue immediately. Um, we go to signing, but we say, we see that, there, that there's an error because not all items are completely filled in because, oh, wait a minute, we had an appendix here. Um, switching to the appendix, I see that also here, everything is filled in and we can see also uh, uh, some options that we just forgot to fill in. So in this case, I will move back to the editable step. I will say, okay, forgot to make changes uh, and Hans of course will be updated for this um, so now uh, we are back in the editing mode I can here set the uh, subscription type and I can say okay this is here handled by the customer I will, I will save the options and I can also set some terms here and maybe we want to uh, add a, um, 
uh, an application, uh, some application accounts here. Uh, so for example, this, and this can also be a, a, a way to actually upsell into, into your process because it uh, still allows you to easily make those, uh, make those changes. Um, so this is now automatically calculated, uh, and uh, we have some terms here that are also filled in already by, uh, by the system. Um, we can also have an option here to say, okay, this is actually a partner sale. So we sold it via partner into the direct model, and we can enter the partner here. So first of all, we, we can enter the name of the partner here. So say the partner here is uh, Agile Point. Again, we will uh, we'll update it. Um, and we see also that Appendix 2 now suddenly has appeared because we switched to the partner model. So say there's some actual additional partner terms or bonus, this can be triggered uh, via the system. Uh, if I then switch back to no, we see automatically that the appendix disappears as well. So this is uh, something that's highly dynamic and, and uh, easy to, uh, to, uh, to manage. Um, right now, I will now again try to complete the document. And again, it asks me to send invitations and it can also allow me to remind uh, the people that they have to enter a signature so we don't have to change them manually, but we can do it automatically. So right now, from my side, I will make the signature and as, uh, if Hans can do the same, then we will have a signed document. Thank you, Tim. I just received the request to uh, sign the document, which we will do right now. Sign, accept and sign. Voila, we see that the document is signed, all fields are completed, and we have a complete, uh, also a, a signing log at the end of the document where we see the, the, the log of the changes that were, uh, that were made uh, here at the end. Um, so this is all, uh, this is now a completed contract. I will show again into my uh, overview that it also is not showing up as a signed contract next to all the other documents that we have. So we also completely um, track and, and um, uh, store all the documents in the single system, which allows you to also get the overview of all the, the data that you stored. Because Chrome tricks are not only about the, the text contents, of course, in them, but also about the data that's being stored. All these variables that we uh, that we just stored in a contract, they, they are also viewable uh, from Docfield, of course, but they can also be exported again to all the systems and back to Agile Point, of course. Um, so this gives a, bit, a quick overview of what Docfield can do for you and, and the types of documents you can create. Um, now I will switch back uh, to you, Hans. Uh, thank you, Tim, for the insights and the capabilities of uh, Docfield. Um, if everything is fine, we are able to see back uh, the process model. Uh, and as we can okay. see, uh, the contract... Um, so, everybody able to see the process again? Uh, no, not yet. So, we are switching between uh, systems right now. So, Supriya, just make sure people can see my screen again. Yeah. Okay. So, thank you. Uh, so, the contracting part has finished, and now we are in the onboarding step. So, now the legal paperwork is finished, and the, the diff a different team within our company can now proceed with the onboarding of the customer, preparing the goods, and, and doing the shipping and the logistics part. So this is really a good sample of what we are calling cross-functional automation. We are starting on the sales cycle and it's going really in one process. It's going across the, uh, the organization. It's talking to different systems. Uh, it's grabbing data from, from users, from silos of data, etc. So again, this process here is just uh, one sample and of course uh, can be adapted to your uh, own needs. Let me quickly switch to back to our uh, presentation for now. Okay. And if everything is fine, you should be able to see uh, back my uh, key takeaways. Correct. Okay, thank you. So if we are capturing together what we saw today and what are uh, kind of key takeaways, what we want to give uh, to you, uh, when you are setting up a system, when you are trying to focus on improvement on procurement, document management cycles, etc., it's quite important to make sure you have an integration into your existing systems in order to protect your investment and your data consistency. Uh, making downloads like what's happening in the majority of companies today, making downloads, import them into Excel, 
doing type of mail merges, uh, ping pongs with, with Word documents is definitely not, not a proper way uh, to move on. Another important topic is when you define uh, compliancy and your risk management procedures is keeping in mind and making a proper definitions of your service level agreements. Okay, uh, The most important point in your organization is customer centricity. So you're really focusing on your deliverables to your customers. And when you are signing even or making a contract with your customer, you want to make sure that the whole process is going very smoothly, that you're protecting each step and define what is an accepted timeline for each step in this process. So therefore, service level agreements internal in your organization are quite important. Today, most of the companies, they define the service level agreements. They are nicely written out on paper, but they are not hardly implemented. Okay. Make sure also to involve your users from the very early stage when you are building or setting up a system so that users are quite closely related and they can adapt and get trained very early into the process. Something we were not able to show you in the demo because of timing limitations, but we are still able to do that afterwards, is the whole analytics and reporting. A quite important element, uh, both in Doc field and Agile Point, everything what you're doing is fully tracked. There is dashboards available, which is showing you what is the average uh, lead time for a contract, uh, how many actions were performed on that contract, and also what is the cost to build a contract or, or defining a contract. All that information is available and can be used to make a continuously evaluation and optimization of your internal procurement related processes. So these are our most uh, important uh, key takeaways. We still have a few minutes left for Q&A. So if people have any questions or they want to see something more in detail, please feel free to ask them in the, the chat window. Uh, if no questions are, uh, are coming up, I want to thank everybody for their time and their interest. And of course, you're welcome uh, at Docfield and Agile Point to uh, learn more about capabilities and to define and discuss maybe your own pilot or proof of concept. Tim, I want to thank you for uh, your time today and uh, the nice overview of uh, the Docfield capabilities. I'm quite sure that uh, it was really helpful for a lot of companies and can be an enabler for the future for them. Uh, thank you as well, Hans. Uh, I think we have some questions coming in. Uh, uh, I have a question here about the implementation time. How long does it take uh, to implement such a system? Um, I know from my side that uh, for us it's it's, it's quite uh, it's it's a fast setup. But can you maybe tell a bit more about the whole Agile Point setup and how how long that will take to to implement? Well, by average, the, it's all coming back to understanding your own business process, of course. The implementation itself is the shortest cycle. Okay, it can take a few hours to a couple of days, uh, but the majority of issues what we see is is to understand the business process itself. Okay, uh, mostly today uh, a lot of business processes today are written on paper or maybe they are embedded as a kind of a black box into a kind of a legacy system. So if all that information is available. It's going quite fast in a couple of hours we have the systems up and running and the main benefit what the users will have is that the processes are becoming transparent they are becoming visible so people can really understand and see how is this business process going and there is one huge benefit to this part when business processes are becoming visible and you really understand them it's much easier to fine-tune them and to optimize them and find the bottlenecks and say, okay, if we change, optimize this, this is going to result in a faster delivery to a client, by example. All right, thank you uh, for that. Uh, another question we have coming in is, uh, who can take the most advantage of Agile Point and Dogfield in terms of uh, which department and, and which uh, which titles? Yeah, maybe Tim, this is one you can answer as well. From my experience, uh, I think it's going across uh, all departments, but what we typically see as uh, departments which are quite beneficial of this is teams like HR, by example. Okay, uh, some companies are working with a lot of freelancers or contractors, so in that situation, it's really useful. It's speeding up the whole cycle. Sales teams definitely, and legal teams. So they, these are what, from my experience, the top three uh, department: HR, yeah. sales, 
and legal procurement. Yeah, maybe the, you have some additional teams. Yeah, yeah. yeah. okay. Now that it depends on the company type, of course, but that's the that's the same for us. But also we see some uh, improvements in the, uh, also in the, uh, for larger companies, the procurement departments that that are auto that want to automate a lot of buying processes. Uh, because there's a lot of document handling in that sector as well. And uh, there we see a lot of manual work being done. Um, another question we have coming in is uh, uh, in, uh, in sales contracts, what is the reduction you can expect to see? Because you're already talking about from weeks to days. Is, what's the average reduction in, in terms of lead time that you, that you see? Well, if I, sp if I speak from my personal experience, that's maybe a good example. Uh, I noticed, especially in, in the larger type of uh, enterprises as, as customer, when we are typically dealing with, with legal teams internally, but also external legal teams, uh, typically the, the, the cycle to sign an agreement, build and, and sign an agreement was sometimes between two to three months. Okay. Uh, and a lot of this delay was caused by the fact that at the end people were uh, dealing with the wrong version of a document or somebody made a change to that document and another somebody else made it as well so it took a lot of time to restart rereading in fact each time the whole contract okay if somebody is making a change you don't blindly trust them and you have to restart reading so now at this stage uh like one of the last deals where i did with a large financial institute we were able to solve the whole contract within one week in fact uh, um, so uh, at that moment it it really slowed down uh, sorry it, it didn't slow down but it really improved the whole cycle so reduction is mainly massive uh, because the the problems what we see with the wrong versions is really huge and the people ha are losing a lot of time with this all right um, yeah I, I can say the same for for us as well that it's there that there's a lot of improvements that we see also from our customers um, a question that ties into that a little bit is uh, do customers have to procure both edge point and dogfield to take the whole advantage or, or can uh, can these some of these gains be be separated yeah today it's a combined solution so uh, maybe somebody has already uh, agile point or maybe somebody has already dog field so uh, the dog field team has created a kind of a connector which integrates into the agile point environment um, we have that connection uh, connector now available as a kind of a, a say uh, a first release um, and that's going to be available to uh, any existing uh, customer but of course you will still need a license on uh, both Agile Point and both uh, Dog Field Port. Yeah, exactly. Um, I think there's uh, um, uh, an another question is: uh, is do, sh do Agile Point customers have a connector for Dog Field, or is it something uh, in the in the works? But that, that ties into that as well. Um, yeah, so that yeah, ties into well. So yeah. yeah, that connector is no need to have a connector on the Agile Point part because that's a default connector which is already available to all the Agile Point customers. So there is a gateway enabled on the Duckfield part. Uh, there is a, a very short documentation. It takes you literally a couple of minutes to establish that integration, and you can talk into the uh, Duckfield uh, environments. So effort to enable the integration is really taking you uh, a few minutes. All right. Um, I think that's all the questions for now um, that we have received. Um, uh, anything else for, for final words, uh, Hans, from your side? No, Tim, I want to thank you for your uh, time and effort. And I want to thank also the audience for their, their uh, interest and, and time to listen. And I'm looking forward to have, uh, if, if people are interested to learn more, feel free to reach out to uh, Tim of Dogfield or to us at Agile Point. And um, if you are interested to set up a pilot or proof of concept, we are happy to assist you. Yeah. I want yeah. to thank everyone from uh, my side for their time and interest and have a nice day. Yeah, same from my side as well. Um, be sure to check out our, both our websites, uh, of course, uh, agilepoint.com and dogfield.com, uh, where we also explain a bit more about our integration on the automation page. Um, thanks everybody and uh, have a great uh, have a great day.